uh, welcome to the second in our introduction to MPC. And what we're going to do today is we're going to discuss a very, very simple MPC protocol. Okay, so our protocol, we're actually going to use fully homomorphic encryption, which is kind of a bit weird because usually we use fully homomorphic encryption as a alternative to MPC, as a way of outsourcing secure computation to a single server. But we'll see, if you have fully homomorphic encryption, you have a very, very simple um, MPC protocol, which we'll kind of now explain. So what is fully homomorphic encryption? Okay, so first we kind of have to think about what is an encryption scheme. So we have a public key encryption scheme, which has an encryption algorithm and a decryption algorithm. And you encrypt a message and then you decrypt the message and you get so decrypt the ciphertext and you get the message back. Okay, so that's an encryption algorithm. So what does it mean to be fully homomorphic? Well, what it means is that there's two other algorithms which are called addition and multiplication, such that the addition algorithm adds two ciphertexts together in a way that when you decrypt the, the result of the addition operation, you actually get the sum of the two original plaintexts. And then there's a multiplication operation which takes two ciphertexts and multiplies in some sense, the ciphertext together, such that when you decrypt the resulting ciphertext, you actually get the product of the underlying plaintext. And this is said to be a fully homomorphic encryption scheme because it can do both addition and multiplication. Now, for those of you who have uh, kind of seen in cryptography before, you can't have an NCCA secure fully homomorphic encryption scheme because it's homomorphic. So this is, you know, like it's it's malleable because it's homomorphic. So the best you can get is an NCPA scheme. Okay, so what do we have out there? So you may have heard, you know, the RSA algorithm. This is the textbook RSA, you M to the E equals C mod N. Um, this is a one-way CPA secure multiplicatively homomorphic scheme. You can multiply two ciphertexts together and you basically multiply the underlying plain text mod n. Palia, as done in textbooks, is another um, encryption scheme based on factoring. And this allows, this is what's called additively homomorphic in that if you, there's a, an operation which allows you to add two ciphertexts together and the result is, is you get the uh, a ciphertext which is the addition which encrypts the addition of the underlying plaintext. So the problem is, the difficulty is, is coming up with a scheme which is both additively and multiplicatively homomorphic. And for many years, this was seen to be impossible. And the reason you're interested in this is because addition and multiplication are universal over a finite field or over a ring. And so if you've got addition and multiplication, you can compute any function homomorphically. Okay, so what does this mean? So it means that we can define a procedure called eval. What eval does, it takes any function we want, f, with n inputs, and if we are given the set of ciphertext ct1 to ctn, which encrypt the messages m1 to mn, then we can apply eval to those ciphertexts and then decrypt it, and then we get the output, which is the function applied to the messages. So this allows us to outsource computations to a server. The server gets the ciphertext, the server evaluates the function, and the server then returns the encrypted result to the end user for decryption. And the reason why this works is because, as we said on the previous slide, addition and multiplication are universal. Therefore, any function f can be expressed as a sequence of additions and multiplications, maybe in an inefficient manner, but it is possible. So in theory, if we have fully homomorphic encryption, we can outsource the comp secure computation of any function to an untrusted single server. So how is this going to help us with MPC? So we kind of, to, to apply it in MPC, we need a little bit extra. And so the little bit extra that we need is, let's assume that our FHE scheme is slightly special. And it's special in the following sense that if we take n parties, we can take that single secret key and we can split it into n subkeys, such that decryption is now done in the following way. What we do is we take a ciphertext and each of those n parties does a partial decryption using their split part of the secret key to produce what's called a partial decryption. 
and then these partial decryptions are combined together to produce the final decryption. Okay, so that's the basic idea. And most um, proposals for fully homomorphic encryption schemes have some form of so-called distributed decryption operation. Now, this is going to be key later on in a, in a future lecture when we look at the speeds protocol because the speeds protocol makes a great use of this form of distributed decryption. So the reason we're kind of giving this simple example in this lecture is because not only does it introduce an MPC protocol, but it also introduces some of the ideas that we'll see later on. Okay, so how do we design an MPC protocol? This is our first MPC protocol, and it's just basically six lines. So what, 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 what is it? Okay, so the first thing that, you, that the parties do is they want to compute a function on their inputs. So the party encrypts its input. So it just applies the homomorphic encryption scheme. It encrypts the message with respect to some public key that's been defined, such that we've got a distributed decryption operation, and it encrypts its ciphertext. The parties now exchange their ciphertext. And then what we can do is we can then apply the eval operation. Each party individually applies its eval operation on the function that, wants, that is wanted to be computed, resulting in a ciphertext which encodes or encrypts the result of the function that we're actually trying to compute in our MPC protocol. Okay, so then what do we do? We then apply that partial decryption operation to decrypt that output ciphertext from the eval operation, and we get the partial decryptions. And now we exchange those partial decryptions, which allows us to then apply the combined function, which gives us the final output of the MPC protocol. So it's very simple. So, and it's also, it looks on the face of it incredibly efficient. So how are we measuring efficiency here? Because this is going to come up in other protocols as well. So we're measuring efficiency on how much data is sent, what the computation costs are, and how many rounds of, computate, of communication there are. So first, let's look at the last one. How many rounds of communication? Well, there's only two rounds in this protocol. The parties can exchange their ciphertext, and then the parties exchange the partial decryption. So there's only two rounds of communication. And the reason we have that is because the eval function is applied in the homomorphic is applied homomorphically and so that's done locally by each party on its own without any form of interaction so what we have is what we have that this eval function is in some sense uh, the magic this uh, is allowing we're, we're computing the evals each individual party is computing the eval function just as the server does in the traditional application of MPC the only MPC thing about it is actually the way we do the out get the result is we do the decryption. We do the decryption by everybody decrypting together. Okay, the trouble is, is this protocol is relatively slow because almost all existing fully humble encryption schemes are relatively slow for arbitrary functions f. But if the function f is simple enough, this is actually a really, really efficient protocol. And we'll see later on that for some things that we want to compute, Actually, this protocol is really, really efficient. What problems do we have with this protocol? Well, we've said the efficiency is a problem. There's also, it seems that we seem to be okay against some forms of, 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 of passive attack, of, sorry, of active attack, because everybody computes the eval function and they all have to agree on this final ciphertext. So if we have three parties and one party computes a different function, this will be detected when we do the partial decryption. It, the, the, we'll be applying a partial decryption to different ciphertexts, and therefore the, the, the combined operation will not work. So we seem on the face of it to be kind of, we've got better than passive security. However, the problem is, is that the, av is that the adversary can lie with its initial encryption. And we'll see that this comes up later when we look at the speech protocol, in that the adversary can actually lie in the original encryption scheme, producing an invalid encryption here, such that when you do the partial decryption, you leak information. So it's not that the adversary can change what's computed, but it's the combination of the encryption and the partial decryption can leak information, either about the underlying secret key of the homomorphic encryption scheme, which would be a, which could a security problem for later on or 
It leaks information about the underlying messages, basically creating some form of what we call a selective failure attack. Okay, so this FHE approach to MPC gives us a really low round complexity. The trouble is it's very slow and it's only passively secure. And we'd like a more efficient solution. So we, you know, which is actively secure, it's not so slow. So how do we trade these things? Okay, so there's two approaches in, in the literature. There's what's called the Yao's garbled circuit approach. Now, what happens in Yao's garbled circuit approach is that what we kind of do is we kind of encrypt the function evaluation. So it's, it's a bit like the previous protocol, the FHE-based protocol, in that it's got a fixed number of rounds independent of the complexity of the function, but you kind of get this by encrypting the function in some way by using garbled circuits. The other approach is to use what's called linear secret sharing schemes. Now, linear secret sharing schemes take a completely different approach. What they do is they say, okay, we're going to have a very, very simple operations. We're not going to do any form of deep encryption, but we're going to pay a penalty of having higher round complexity. In fact, the round complexity will depend on the complexity of the function. So there are two approaches here. We either have low round complexity, in fact, constant round complexity, which might be good for um, uh, networks where we have you know, a very large distance between, between the two between the parties, what are called wide area networks, where we send, we still send a lot of data. But the other one is to use a, a high round complexity protocol where the round complexity depends on the complexity of the function. And they're probably better suited for uh, local area networks where we have low ping times. So low ping times are usually associated with uh, MPC protocols based on linear secret sharing. And high ping times are usually, are usually associated with protocols based on garbled circuits. And so that's what's going to be coming up in the following lectures. And in the next one, we're going to be uh, slowly building up the background theory that we need to do linear secret sharing based MPC. In particular, we're going to be looking at the underlying coding theory behind much of the linear secret sharing schemes. So tune in next time or wait for the next video to come up in this sequence and we'll tell you about that.